How's it going guys? Today I'm here at the Macquarie University Lizard Lab and I'm going to give you guys a little tour of this place today and hopefully you enjoy. I'm an associate professor at Macquarie Uni in the Biological Sciences Department and I have a, a research group that we informally call the Lizard Lab and basically most of our, our work is sort of in the area of animal behaviour and behavioural ecology which has sort of an evolutionary component to it so we're interested in, in quite simple questions like why animals do the particular things they do, why um, they've evolved particular behaviors or particular structures, things like color patches, why are some male lizards particularly brightly colored, how does that, um, how is that evolved under this process of, of sexual selection. We do a lot of work on social organization in, in lizards and social systems and we've, we've got um, a new research grant with uh, Jeff Wiles' lab in the University of, at the University of Tasmania on um, sort of the evolution of the family living in, in lizards. And we do quite a bit of work on um, cognition and learning in lizards. So we have projects looking at um, the relationship between learning ability and invasion success, for example, or um, the relationship between learning ability or what we call behavioral flexibility and, and um, social and mating systems. So quite a wide range of, of projects sort of in, in animal behavior and ecology and evolution. Well, um, welcome to the Lizard Lab. This is where it all happens. We've got our main house, which is where all the offices are, and we've got a couple of, we've got a wet lab that we can go and have a look at, and then another room where we just have all our equipment, and we have our, our lab meetings over there. Then we've got a shed over here where we um, do a lot of the, the cognition work. So at the moment we've got blueies and sleepy lizards in there and then we have what we call the cognition center but it's really just a, a, um, a complex of rooms where we do a lot of um, animal behavior work and, um, and also performance work so we can we can measure sprint speed, endurance, temperature, preference and, and things like that and then a short walk from here We've got all the, the outdoor enclosures that, that we can go and have a look at. So these are some outdoor lizard enclosures that um, one of my PhD students, James Baxter Gilbert, built for his water dragon project. And his project was specifically looking at how water dragons are adapted to living in urban environments. So he raised lots of baby water dragons um, and that, that project is now, has now come to an end and he's busy publishing that work. But when, these are really just short-term enclosures that, that are probably going to be removed. But um, were really useful for, um, for his, his study of, of urban evolution and adaptation in, in water dragons. So this is um, our sort of netted enclosure with um, we've got 40 plastic tubs that are three meters in diameter and they're great for, for keeping different species of skinks mainly. The one issue is that they're slightly low so um, if you have any agamids they can they can hop out but we can we can sort of put in a an, um, an enclosure that like we've done at the top there that'll stop something from, from jumping out. So typically we would keep lizards in here that um, we're doing 
doing behavioral experiments with and we can use these tubs for, for different experimental manipulations. And um, yeah, it's just a, a really good setup for keeping lizards outdoors where they, they do much better and um, they, they tend to, to be a lot more healthy living outdoors under semi-natural conditions as opposed to indoors. And keeps the, the budget down for yeah. lights and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. It keeps the budget down, the lizards are happier. And um, in the past we've had blueies, we've had um, eastern water skinks, we've had tree skinks, we've had water dragons, we've even had um, um, an agamid whose name uh, slips, <laughs> slips my, uh, my ever failing memory. So yeah, we've had a whole range of species and um, it's been a really good, good resource for, for all these projects. So this, this is one of our lizard rooms. We've got two sort of um, two small buildings and then this is the, this is more like a, a complex of rooms and we've got a whole lot of Lampropholis in here which are the small delicate skinks that are, are very common around Sydney and Christine is in charge of maintaining um, the, the colony, you could say, and she's busy feeding a whole bunch of, of baby skinks um, baby crickets because they are all, uh, these are particularly small skinks, so we have to special order these tiny crickets that they can, that they can eat. So this is a, a project um, that Dan Noble is running along with Fonte Carr, one of his PhD students. So they, they're interested in a whole bunch of questions about pace of life and life history and whether the developmental environment of, a, of, of um, the egg and the offspring impacts on all sorts of traits like growth rates and metabolic rate and learning ability and and things like that. So yeah, we've got um, the advantage of having this great facility is that we can raise lots of lizards under controlled conditions to, to answer these sorts of questions. So th this is just another small room that we have in the, the cognition center. So we've got racks where we can stack up quite large numbers of, of lizards providing they're relatively small so again we've got more of the the Lampropholis delicata here the the delicate skinks that Dan Noble and um, Fonte Carr are currently working on but in the past we've had geckos and um, tree skinks and, and all kinds of things so it's quite useful having a number of these these small rooms where we can keep large numbers of, of lizards for behavioral experiments. So this is what we call the cognition center, which, which is a bit of a misnomer because we use this room for a lot of things, but it was called the cognition center because we've got this big setup of um, this big camera system which links to DVD, uh, sorry, DVRs, and we, we've used it in a lot of studies on cognition and, and learning in lizards but basically it gets used for a wide range of, of studies on, on animal behavior but the the main feature is just um, the, all the, the camera systems that are set up on all these shelves and then we also do some performance work so we have this human treadmill here which has a, um, a special setup that goes on top and we can we can measure endurance in, in lizards. But basically if you sort of have a little look around you'll see that we've got lots of containers containing um, various lizards. Um, for example, Ivan is um, doing his PhD on, on how global warming impacts behavior and how it affects reproductive mode and Victorian is helping him with some of this work so maybe Yvonne 
can tell you about what he's what he's yeah. up to. Okay. So we have we are using a very interesting species which is called Cyphos equalis, or maybe the common name you will know it's three toed skink, three toed uh, yellow bellied skink, and uh, it's very interesting because they have uh, populations that are oviparous, kind of like they they lay eggs and they eggs incubate for a long time, and they are also um, viviparous uh, populations. So it's a very useful uh, model species to test uh, what will be in the interplay or the relation between the reproductive mode and the global change. So basically we're testing, as Martin said, a lot of things that the, that the climate change will, will, will affect in them. We are testing morphology, um, behavior, like uh, foraging behavior, anti-predator behavior, some of exploratory behavior also. And we are also doing um, locomotor performance. Um, so we adapt this small treadmill that we got from, from another lab and we, we were doing some crowd work with them and look, you look, it's really nice, it looks yeah. really cool. And we are testing, we are not expecting a lot because they are kind of, if you know the species, you know that they are more like a snake form and they, their legs are very small. So we have tested a lot of animals and apparently it's very consistent their, level, their performance. But uh, yeah, as we expected, they are not very good as um, running, they are not taking a lot of time here. Okay, so go inside, that's it. So we went until they earned the half of the terminal and then we start now. So they are just kidding. <laughs> We are also recording, I can send you some videos if you want. <laughs> How's this lizard going? They are really good, but... Wow, I'm amazed he's keeping up. Yep, and then stop. We stop this. Then we put them back, not to force them. So this is another one of our animal rooms. It's currently being used for um, some cognition studies. In fact, Birgit is doing her PhD work on um, comparative cognition and behavioral flexibility in family living lizards, including some species that don't live in families but um, are part of that, that same group. And she's being ably assisted by <laughs> Sebastian over here. But the general setup is that we've got all these cameras, they hook up to DVRs and we have individual lizards in the tubs and they're given a particular problem that they have to solve and it all gets recorded on, on film and then analysed later from the, the video footage. So we're presenting the lizards with different cues, different colours and shapes. One of them is associated with a reward so the open dish is in front of the positively reinforced one and the lizard has to figure out which um, color or shape is actually positively reinforced and go there to find its food if it goes to the wrong side it is not rewarded so these are our giant um, outdoor enclosures they we've got six of them they measure 16 meters by 10 meters um, we originally built them for experiments on lizard mating systems and, um, and social organization. So the cool thing about these enclosures is that we can, we can basically replicate conditions in the wild, but we can, um, we can have a lot more control over the, um, the social interactions that the animals would have and which individuals they would encounter. We can manipulate the number of shelters and the and resource availability. We can connect the enclosures so we can study dispersal, for example. Um, so in the past, we've done a big study on mating systems in water snakes, in Elamphus coyi. So we had a large number of, of males and females in each of these six enclosures and we had um, measurements on their, their physiological performance, so things like sprinting ability and endurance and 
we we studied their reproductive tactics. So some males will defend territories, and other males will will adopt a, a satellite strategy. And we could look at the fitness of those two strategies. So when all the females were pregnant, we brought them into the lab, and then when they gave birth, we could genotype all the, the offspring and link that back to the reproductive strategy of, of the males that, that fathered those offspring. So our next big study in using these enclosures is, um, is going to be a project on understanding the evolution of, of family living and how plastic that is in the Agonia group, which is a very well-known group in Australia um, because so many species live in, in families. So we can manipulate resources and see if we can make, if we can generate the sort of conditions that you need for, for family living in a species that wouldn't normally live in a family and likewise we could manipulate resources in in such a way that um, a family living species might actually adopt a different strategy so we can we can study how plastic family living is in, in lizards but um, yeah it's an amazing facility it's a little overgrown at the moment because we don't have anything in them at the at this point in time but the plan is to clean them up and um, and set up some some really exciting experiments on on social living in this sense. Cool. So this is our wet lab where we um, can bring lizards in and do morphological measurements we can Look at things under the microscope. We've also got a lot of incubators. We've got five incubators for um, our various studies on the influence of, of the incubation environment on um, phenotypic or on, on, on traits that that might be um, plastic to development. So that's some of the work that we're doing with respect to to global warming projections. And then we've also just got a minus 30 freezer for all our DNA samples. Um, we've got our whole um, um, O2 our oxygen um, analyzer for, um, for all the, the metabolic work. And yeah, so so this is just the, the sort of Space that, that we use. So thanks for watching guys, that was just a quick look around at the Lizard Lab and a quick look at some of the things that are going on at the moment. Things are always changing and there's always something new going on. So make sure you guys check out their Facebook page and website and whatever else related to the lab for constant updates and more info on what's going on. I'll leave some links to those in the description down below and if you guys have any questions make sure you leave a comment, like this video if you got something out of it and Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.